happened to us. Well, when we continue, we'll tell you about one of the biggest feuds ever to erupt in Hollywood. It involves Playboy's Hugh Hefner, a famous film director, and a murdered Playboy Playmate of the Year. Geraldo Rivera with a story of smear and obsession right after this. 2020. Sponsored by BMW. Hugh Hefner made her a pinup. Peter Bogdanovich tried to make her a star. Now each claims the other shares the blame for Dorothy Stratton's death. Geraldo Rivera with a story of smear and obsession when 2020 continues. Thirty-two years ago, Hugh Hefner founded Playboy magazine and began labeling different young women as playmates. In 1980, one of those women, Dorothy Stratton, was murdered by her estranged husband. In an age when today's news stories become tomorrow's movies, the murder of a pinup girl was guaranteed box office. What wasn't expected was that Stratton's lover, film director Peter Bogdanovich, would write a book charging that Hugh Hefner was indirectly responsible for Stratton's death. Well, since her murder, two movies have been made about Stratton, both portraying her as a sincere but gullible small-town girl, her fate sealed when she mixed with the playboy culture. Sound like the stuff of old-time Hollywood? It doesn't amuse Hugh Hefner. Geraldo Rivera has been following this story and has worked to separate reality from fantasy. Uh, um, I'm sure that this has been many a girl's dream and certainly many of the playmates dream and it's been mine Dorothy Stratton um, age 20 like here being named Playboy's playmate for the year 1980 beautiful sensual on this sunny afternoon at the peak of her promising career and to Hef who has made me probably the happiest girl in the world today thank you with several movie roles already to her credit Dorothy represented something very special to Playboy magazine and to its founder, Hugh Hefner. She was the first of the centerfolds to have a real chance for Hollywood stardom. Some people even thought she had a chance to become another Marilyn Monroe. The tendency to compare Dorothy with Monroe is sadly related to the way she died. Just four months after her afternoon in the Hollywood Sun, Dorothy was shot and killed by the man in the white suit her estranged husband, Paul Snyder. Snyder was a former pimp and small-time promoter, and Dorothy was his basic meal ticket. She has definitely got her head together, very much so. After shooting and killing her, Snyder saved the state the trouble and turned the gun on himself. Why did he kill Dorothy? Well, for one thing, at the time of the murder, she was living with another man, Peter Bogdanovich, the well-known director and Hollywood playboy. In fact, Bogdanovich had just directed Dorothy in a film called They All Laugh. All about extramarital affairs. It was art imitating life. You think she's going to meet the boyfriend or the husband or what? Find out from Austin. This town is a place where life and death are often played out in public. And the audience has followed the tragic story of Dorothy Stratton with grim fascination. Brutally murdered by her insanely jealous husband five years ago, the young and beautiful actress and Playboy playmate is, if anything, more famous today than she ever was during her life. The reason? A bitter war is being fought by two famous men who in very different ways both loved her. It's a battle to fix the blame for her death. Although the Stratton murder seems a clear example of the tragic classic, jealous husband killing unfaithful wife, the only surviving member of the love triangle, the boyfriend Peter Bogdanovich, last year wrote a book in which he promoted a unique theory. It wasn't her affair that drove the husband, Paul Snyder, to commit murder. What really made him do it, according to Bogdanovich, was Dorothy's association with Playboy yes. and with Hugh Hefner. I don't know that I would say that Hefner is the real villain, um, but certainly his, he's culpable for many of the things that happened um, to Dorothy. Um, I think it's, in a strange way, I think it's the whole Playboy influence. Bogdanovich refused to appear on 2020 to explain how Playboy's influence could have led to the murder. But since he began promoting his book and his views, he seems to have been on virtually every television talk show that would listen. If there was an overriding uh, desire, it was uh, to write a book 
which uh, would maybe help other young women to avoid some of the traps that she fell into. A person that I was very much in love with named Dorothy Stratton, who at a young age was maneuvered, tricked, uh, cajoled, coaxed. Dorothy's instincts were against it, and for six months she didn't want to do it, and fought against the idea of taking off her clothes for Playboy. Last month, in a news conference jammed by dozens of reporters, Hefner and Playboy struck back. Dorothy's tragic death was motivated, not in any way, by her association with Playboy, but clearly by the breakup of her marriage because of the affair with Peter Bogdanovich. So the famous publisher and the well-known director are engaged in a public tug of war over Dorothy Stratton's memory. And the intensity of their battle has been surprising even in this community, grown accustomed to scandal. What he has really done is, in a very delusional and ob obsessive way, is, is blame others, primarily myself, but blame others for things that he himself feels guilty about, can't deal with. And in the book, the primary villain in the book is not the husband who killed her. The, the, the villain winds up being me. I'd be a pretty good writer if I could make all that up. It's all true. And no matter what Hafner says, it all happened. Um, the stories that are in there were told to me by Dorothy or by other witnesses to the events. Conversations that I had with Hefner happened between Hefner and me. Uh, he doesn't have a very good memory. And um, unfortunately, I do. Because Bogdanovich and Hefner are who they are, each can command media attention. They can get publicity for their charges. But who is right? Let's take them one at a time. Bogdanovich has put his indictment of Hefner in writing. Our investigation reveals that in many ways, this book is a smear. Its two main points are that Dorothy was hurt by Playboy and that the association created a foul climate which led to her death. There is no real proof of either charge. And there are errors of fact and misleading innuendo ranging from serious to silly. In his very first sentence, for instance, Bogdanovich writes that Dorothy's husband, Paul Snyder, was 28. He was really 29. Bogdanovich describes how he was swept off his feet by the sight of Dorothy at this roller skating party at the mansion, which Playboy videotaped. There she was, he writes, over six feet tall, in her orange roller skates, wearing a lime green one-piece bathing suit. A one-piece bathing suit. Well, at least he got the color right. In graphic, some might say pornographic detail, he describes Snyder's violent rape and sodomy of Dorothy before or after her murder, tearing her body apart. Well, a spokesman for the coroner's office told us, quote, Bogdanovich doesn't know what he's talking about. And that, quote, there was no evidence of rape or sodomy. When asked about the apparent inconsistency, Bogdanovich in a letter says his information came from an LAPD detective. The detective now refuses to comment on the case. What I came to realize over the period that I was doing research on the book was how extraordinarily insidious this whole business of homogenized pornography had become to the point where it had gained this extraordinary amount of respectability and Hefner was as much a tradition, Playboy and Hefner, and his whole bag of tricks was as much a tradition as Disneyland. In attempting to place blame on Hefner for Dorothy's death, Bogdanovich has made the point repeatedly that Playboy is destructively pornographic. Apparently he's come by that feeling recently. Through 1980, Bogdanovich had been a frequent guest, a fixture even, at the Playboy mansion. Quite at home with the man and the environment, he now finds so repulsive. Look at this log of the director's many visits into the world of Playboy. Compiled by the mansion staff, it shows disco parties, holiday celebrations, Hefner's birthday, you name it, Bogdanovich was there. She uh, was naive in many ways, very innocent, believed what people said, believed the whole Playboy hype, found herself, when she got to Hollywood, found herself maneuvered by Hefner into a sexual situation that uh, she found very shocking and in fact it traumatized her. Dorothy and I talked about Hefner a lot uh, and uh, as I say she uh, spoke of him only in growing terms. For about a year Dr. Steve Kushner shared a house with Dorothy and husband Paul Snyder. Kushner has a much different recollection of Dorothy's feelings for Hefner. Dorothy 
who was very proud of her association with Playboy. When she became a centerfold, she was proud of that. And I think that she uh, was beside herself with joy when she became Playmate of the Year. Well, Snyder is the great, the, the, the biggest villain because he killed her. Hefner didn't kill her. I very much feel that, the, that what the book says is that we live in a climate that produces this kind of event. The climate. To housemate Kushner, it was a simple, tragic love triangle. You see it as Snyder versus Bogdanovich over Bogdanovich taking away Snyder's wife. That, that's right. Uh, you know, uh, the classic, the traditional, the tragic triangle. Right, right. It was that, and uh, you know, anyone, anyone who was close to Snyder at the time, I, I'm sure would 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 tell you the same story. Uh, uh, it was an obsession with him, and. Uh, it had nothing to do with uh, any ill will or ill feeling toward Hefner or, or Playboy. For a life so tragically shortened, Dorothy Stratton's has been very well documented. It's been the subject of two movies, a book and dozens of articles, which, if any of them contain the real story, well, probably none of them, but the real story. At least Dorothy's own version of it does exist, and it's right here, in the files of the federal courthouse in Los Angeles. It's Dorothy's autobiography. A copy was filed after her death in a court fight over who would get the rights to it. Written in 1978 at Paul Snyder's suggestion, it chronicles her first days as a playmate. Well, Bogdanovich quotes from Dorothy's writings in his book and uses them to help prove his thesis that Dorothy was pressured and unhappy in the world of Playboy. Example, on page 30, quote, And I was getting confused, dot, dot, dot. I was getting lonely and I was getting depressed, end quote. Pretty clear cut, right? She hated Playboy life. Wrong. Here's what she really said, quote, And I was getting confused. I was living a wonderful life in the warm sunshine, being catered to 24 hours a day, butlers to feed me and maids to clean my room. I could have anything I wanted and more, and I enjoyed it so much. And I started getting mixed up because I wanted Paul, and I was getting lonely, and I was getting depressed, end quote. So Dorothy's real complaint at the time was not having her husband, Paul Snyder, around to enjoy her good life. In a letter, Bogdanovich admitted he was, quote, interpreting the meaning of Dorothy's text. Another view is that he altered the meaning to support his indictment of Hefner. He also writes that Dorothy cried during the first of these nude photo sessions with Playboy photographer Mario Caselli. A little shrug. Well, of that first session, she writes, I was a little shy standing stark naked in front of a stranger, but after a while, I became more relaxed. A little wine always helps. And got into it. I could even say it was fun. That's it. Nice. Fun. And she didn't just write about it. Listen to this Playboy interview. I love working with the camera. I enjoy working in stills or in motion pictures. I feel very natural with the camera. I, I treat it as another person. And probably because it's Mario, I have so much fun also. Did you see, as Peter Bogdanovich alleges in his book, Dorothy crying during her first nude photo session? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Did she feel she was doing something against her will? No, she totally enjoyed it. Uh, in fact, she didn't think she came up to Playboy standards. And she was surprised to even be accepted, and she was just delighted when she was accepted. To Hefner, the single most malicious charge made by Bogdanovich was that Hefner forced Dorothy to have sex with him, seducing her in the mansion's infamous jacuzzi. Did Hefner seduce her? Yes, he did. No, I, against her will, I, 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 I hasten to add. Did you love Dorothy? Yes, yes, yes. Not in a romantic sense, but yes, in, in a very real way. For the record, did you seduce her? No, I didn't and, and never tried to. The only person used by Bogdanovich to support even indirectly the charge of seduction has since signed a sworn declaration for Playboy that he never said Hefner forced his attentions on her or vied for Dorothy's sexual favor. It's a very real pleasure to be here. Hugh Hefner has been a fixture on America's uh, cultural landscape now for the last 30 years, and he's always been an easy target. His magazine, its treatment of women, his offbeat lifestyle here at the mansion, and so forth. But when it gets right down to it, with Hefner, what you see is what you get. You may not like him, his magazine, or his philosophy, but he has been consistent. And contrary to Peter Bogdanovich's charges, in his treatment of Dorothy Stratton, Hefner appears to have acted totally above board. That is not to suggest that he's completely without blame in the present controversy. As a matter of fact, 
For a man as worldly as he is, he appears to have made a surprisingly clumsy mistake. Hours. Stung by Bogdanovich's charges, Hefner assembled this crush of reporters in Los Angeles last month and accused Bogdanovich of carrying on an affair after the murder with Dorothy Stratton's younger sister, Louise. Louise at the time was just 13 years old. So Hefner essentially was accusing Bogdanovich of child molestation. By the seduction of her 13-year-old sister and the establishment of a romantic relationship as a pathological replacement of Dorothy. Last year, an LAPD investigation concluded there was no evidence Bogdanovich did anything illegal in Los Angeles. Hefner knew that, but by last month, he was ready to hit back. This is my first public appearance since uh, suffering a stroke three and a half weeks ago. A stroke, Hefner says, was caused by the stress and the frustration generated by Bogdanovich's book. But in his efforts to get back at Bogdanovich, Hefner had wounded a child. Living in Vancouver, Canada, where she and sister Dorothy had been raised, Louise, now 17, has filed a multi-million dollar lawsuit against you, Hefner. Were Hefner's charges true? Are they true? No, not at all. They're false. You never had a sexual relationship with Peter Bogdanovich? No. L.B., why don't you describe your relationship with Peter Bogdanovich? Just a friend. He just always helped me in family matters to do with my sister because my mom can't deal with it. Why are you doing this interview? Is it to convince your friends that what you're saying is true or is it something more than that? It's that and also to let him, you have to know that not to do this to any more people and just to, to leave me alone because I haven't done anything wrong at all. Advised by his attorneys not to talk about Louise or her lawsuit, Hefner would say this. In retrospect, do you think you overreacted? Oh, without question, sure. I would say but that that's clear. Did you expect it to get as nasty as it's gotten? No. No. Dorothy Stratton's professional career, from promising start to sorrowful finish, lasted little more than two years. Because she touched the lives of proud, hurt, volatile men, the aftermath, the acrimony, the smears, and the obsession will last much longer. Harold, Peter Bogdanovich has a hit film now, Mask, starring Cher. Why doesn't he just relax and enjoy his life instead of raking up this material which might be better left unsaid. Well, even in the hit film, even in Cher's movie, uh, he's generated a huge controversy over it and Cher says it's because Peter Bogdanovich cannot accept responsibility for things that are his fault. Uh, and perhaps there's a parallel. Perhaps uh, he's projecting guilt on Hefner because he will not accept it, his own blame for being involved in this love triangle mm -hmm. and perhaps indirectly uh, doing things that led to the death of the woman he loved. I mean, maybe it's just that. He just can't accept responsibility. It sounds like a story out of Playboy, doesn't it? Well, it could be. How is Hugh Hefner? Uh, he did have a stroke, as you pointed out in the piece. How's he feeling? He looks okay. Well, you know, the Western world's most famous Playboy is confronting the fact that he will soon be 60 years old. And having had the stroke and involved in this terribly frustrating and bitter controversy, he is showing the effects of it. He's reassessing his life. Maybe he's becoming more mellow. Thank you, Gerardo. We'll be right back. Mm -hmm.